Good morning, guys. It is now Saturday, and I have been up since about 5 a.m. because Abby, my diver, has a meet at Bucknell today, um, and she's just going with her coach and teammates there for this invitational meet. It's a short one, but it's quite a distance, so I'm taking the opportunity to spend today with my other daughter, um, at least until Abby gets home, to do some Christmas shopping, and we need to get some more lights for our Christmas tree. So yesterday in the live stream, um, and also in the comments, you guys have asked me a bunch of times how to tell gender of apple snails, and the most definitive way is to see them mating as these two are. Um, in fact, like when you're breeding apple snails, sometimes the males are so amorous that you have to separate them from the females because they will mate so much they get grooves in their shells. So this is just an example of apple snail mating for you. So this is the super red aquarium and up there in the corner you can see a couple new babies. Um, and I've just dropped some powdered food in here to sort of coat the surfaces so that they can eat easily. But I'm excited to see new fry in here, so that's always good. And then down here in the long fin tank, we also have new fry, and this is an albino one. And even though both parents are um, browns, this aquarium, or the, this pair, tends to throw an equal amount of uh, regular color and albino, as you can see on the back wall. There's three standards there and one albino, an albino in the front, and I have fry of kind of all sizes in this aquarium. Where'd he go? I have ones of this size, new teeny tinies, like that dude in the corner. The last batch, which is back there, which is about double the size of the previous ones. Um, there's another one right here. And they're all doing really, really well, so that is good news. And Proud Papa is actually out of the cave for once to eat, which is nice. He is always ready to breed, so it's nice to see him out and about a little bit. Here's some fry as well in the Shelly tank. These guys are super teeny. There's also some in the back back there. You can see a whole cloud of them, as well as their teenage uh, siblings. But they are super duper cute. Just absolutely teeny. Where'd they go? There's one. You can see even in the fry though, the discrepancy in size. Um, so I have to feed this tank pretty heavily while these guys are growing out, because they do need to eat all the time. But look how cute they are, just so tiny. Let's see a bunch in the back there. Really, really cute. But Shelly's are doing awesome. Um, I'm really happy with how big some of the, the teenagers are getting. Pretty soon I'll pull them to have for sale. But catching Shellies, if you've ever kept them, you know is not a fun game. So I'm going to have to come up with some sort of plan of attack. While I was sitting here enjoying the aquarium, I noticed uh, another batch of new fry today, which are by that big sort of gray blue shell I'm waiting to see one come up to show you guys um, they weren't there yesterday so they are newly emerged and they are super duper teeny hopefully one will come out here momentarily for you to see oh right above the lip of the shell in the back and there's one right here in below this guy too you can see that them defending that little area because there's new fry. 
Shelleys are exceptionally rewarding in this regard. Really good parents and just super fun to keep. I love that blue eye. This is another tank of fry. Uh, it's really hard to focus on because the fry are super teeny. But these are um, Indian hatchet fry and uh, Trigonostigma samfongsi fry that I'm raising. Um, you can see them there a little bit. There's maybe a couple dozen in here. You can see them up at the surface. They're pretty small. The Apistos in here, uh, which are a wild type, look like they're starting to set up shop. So maybe we'll have some fry from them soon. This male is absolutely incredible. Now often the wild types are not as flashy as the line bread strains, but look at the yellow and those pectoral fins, the blue on the cheek. Really, really attractive fish, I think anyway. I think they're just incredible. Again, there's more over here. A lot of you guys have been asking to see some of my shrimp. Um, these are the blues that I had bred outside. There's a nice colony of them in this little aquarium. You can see they have a very, very rich blue color. Um, I also have some crystal reds in this aquarium. See the blues are just absolutely stunning though. Really, really rich. This is a shrimp molt. As you can see, it's fully transparent. And I think a lot of times newer shrimp keepers get really confused about what's a molt and what's a dead shrimp. Um, and again, you can see that this is fully transparent. It's, it's actually pretty awesome to, to look at the molts because, I mean, that is incredible. But a dead shrimp will be opaque and like a pink color, whereas the molts are, as you can see here, completely clear. Um, and obviously just the exoskeleton. So this is my daughter, Clelia. She's grown up a bit since the last time you guys saw her. And we are heading out for her to do her Christmas shopping and for me to get more Christmas lights. So Clelia and I were successful in our trip to get more lights. This house is really tiny. Um, I actually have almost the same square footage in my fish room as we do for living space. Uh, and it has some unique obstacles like the staircase, the doorway, and then sliders, and then windows, and then another doorway. So there's not a whole lot of places to put a tree. So let me show you what we figured out. Now my husband works the, he's a, works the swing shift, so he's on nights right now. So I just went ahead and put the lights on so he wouldn't have to even stress about it. So when he's off on his next day, we can go ahead and decorate it. And all our decorations are kind of stashed everywhere in the meantime. So pardon how messy everything is in the living room. But it's a pretty nice tree, and I really liked the farm we went to. Um, so we just have to sort of decorate it and then that part will be all done and because I'm a giant dork I decorate my living room tank for holidays that are important to me things like Halloween and Christmas so went to the craft store and picked up these li this little Merry Christmas sign and a little Santa they're just plastic so they're non-toxic um, and they won't harm anything in the aquarium and I'll just pull them out after Christmas, but it gives me a chuckle when I look in there. <laughs> 